Hill, Newfoundland, Thursday morning, December the 12th, 1901. A gale of wind, a grey inimical sky, but a kite tugging frantically at about 400 feet. All was in order. They paused and listened. The pen pauses too. Thought leaps beyond it. This little group of optimists at their lonely vigil. A comrade instructed categorically, patient too, sitting at his lonely post in Cornwall, separated from them by 1,700 miles of watery wilderness, doing as he was told. Just that and no more. Sending the letter S in interminable series at prearranged times into the void. Seeing little himself, hearing nothing whatever. And the man to whom it meant so much, whose years of unremitting work had brought him to this grim day and this hour, what of him? He sits eager, expectant at a telephone, connected to a self-resisting coherer, not entirely trusting the receiving apparatus. And time moves on. Nothing except the derisive scream of the wind. 12.30 noon. What was that? A little click. Several. Regularly. The letter S. And again. Marconi heard them for some time before he trusted himself to hand the telephone to Kemp for corroboration. Could he hear anything? Yes, he could. Then the faint sound ceased. Significantly. Orders were being obeyed on the other side. The listeners' hearts thumped with excitement. Then again, at 1.10 and at 1.20 came realism in a succession of those little staccato clicks, unmistakable, heard by them all. The tremendous expanse of ocean had been bridged. What must have been his feelings at this supreme moment? The achievement constituted an epoch in human history. The lives of millions, of every race and creed, would be affected as from this hour. The commercial possibilities were incalculable. The mitigation of loneliness was certain. Continents would speak with each other of their several aspirations. A ship in distress in the perilous wastes of the seas could be succored. Lovers, separated by a hemisphere, would confer privily and be comforted. Empire builders, isolated in desert and jungle, would hear the sounds of their cities and be cheered and refreshed. A new world would be born. The foregoing is an extract from the book A City of Sound, recently published by the Marco Lefone Company. If you will send us the name and address of a friend who you think would appreciate the fine qualities of a Marco Lefone and to whom we may mention your name as a recommendation, we will gladly send you free of charge a copy of this interesting book. An address and reply paid postcard is provided with this record. If you are pleased with the reproduction of this instrument, give us the opportunity of demonstrating to one of your friends.